Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I, why am I fidgeting so much? Okay. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I want to get into what our, or at least my favorite Magmod modifier is. And the answer to that is the Mag Grid. I know that it's a very, very simple piece of equipment, but I feel like it's the most powerful tool that I can think of that helps us with the look that we have. So for example, a lot of the photos that we have are environmental portraits, which is a lot of the scene in the frame. The couple is going to be fairly small, but the attention should go straight to them. And we have a video that shows our techniques and how we do that. And I'll link it at the end and I'll also link it down below. The way that we achieve that is by focusing the light on that subject. So with photography, you know that your eye is always going to go to the brightest portion of the frame. So if you have a flash that's going to throw light everywhere without any control, it's just going to splash everywhere. There's not really so much of attention to one spot or where you want it to be. That's why I freaking love the mag grid. Um, could you use any other company? Yes, of course. Yeah, I'm not being a silly goose and just, you know, writing on Magma. It's just that that's what we use. Um, a grid. So you can, um, so when you attach it to your flash, it's going to give you that direct light where you want it to go. The thing is with like a CTO, you can use it to change the color of the background. As you're seeing right now, you can uh, use it to color correct in a scene. If you're shooting in a very tungsten environment. Yes, but you can live without it. I feel like I can, I can go to a shoot and for some reason I didn't, I don't have my CTO handy for the moment I can shoot and it'll be okay. Um, with the grid, it's kind of a pain in the, you know what, if I don't have something to narrow down that beam. Now, if you're in a bind, grab a piece of paper, roll that thing into a little tube and use it as a snoot. You know, that'll work. It'll get your light where you want it to go. Obviously you don't want to be doing that all the time. It doesn't look very professional. And, um, is, is a little harder to hold on to, obviously, and, and aim it correctly. So with a grid, you just slap it on and um, you're ready to go. It's, it's gonna be accessible and, and you're gonna aim your light exactly where you want it to go. And yes, if you do two grids, it's gonna narrow it down even more. If you do three grids, it's gonna narrow it down even more. We've tested it, so that's why I'm not just pulling it out of my you know what. So if you want a really, really narrow beam, you can stack them up. If you put a grid and a uh, mag sphere, it does soften the spread just a little bit. So if you wanted to use that in order to not be such harsh lines, you can also do that. Um, we go back and forth. Sometimes we do that, sometimes we don't. Usually we don't, if I'm being honest. We usually just use the, the grid directly. And then on that note, I don't usually use the grid if I'm doing something that's more of a close up. And why? Because the light is gonna be a lot harsher. It's gonna have more specular highlights. And if it's a close up of someone, a close up portrait, it's really gonna you know show every imperfection. In that situation, I would probably use something that spreads light more. Either I would use a mag sphere or I would use a soft box or I would use an umbrella or something to soften, make the light bigger. But uh, the grid is more for directing light to smaller portions in your frame so you can make it look like there's a spotlight on that certain subject. That's pretty much it for now. Um, let me know what you guys, what experiences you have, issues that you've had maybe. That could be you know something interesting to discuss also. Thank you guys so much for watching.